Hello, welcome to the first episode in the series of The Essence of Watercolor. Now this is a sample of something we're gonna be doing, but before we do that, let's talk about the basics, supplies. If you are an already an artist, don't go out and buy anything. Go and look and see what you have. We're first gonna start with the fact that you should have plenty of paper towels available. Then you're gonna wanna have a number two pencil. That's always a great thing to have. You're gonna wanna have Pigma markers, preferably the 005 series and a 05 and 01. So you wanna have them in black. Uh, I know they do come in color. So if you wanna pick up a couple of these, if you don't have them, then that's, that's great. And then as you can tell, I have a, a, a variety of brushes. You will see a lot of water, watercolor artists who use the brown, the round, not the brown, but the round brush. And I, you know, um, I'm, I use it, but I don't use it all the time. But if it's your favorite, then definitely have it available. My favorites actually are the flat brushes. And as you can see, I have them in a variety of different sizes. And you will learn why I like them. These I buy at Michael's and I like them because they got this little cushy thing right here. So when it sits in your hand, you're, you know, instead of, uh, you know, you'll develop a callus um, as most calligraphers do, but you know, you have this and it rests on your finger. It's very nice. They're lightweight, they're inexpensive, and these I buy at Michael's. And I like having a variety of sizes in it. They are in the watercolor section. You might find them also in the acrylic. Then I have, like this is a Rogue one that I think I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Now, I also like these wedge brushes and they are from Paper and Ink. Um, they have different sizes. I believe this is the largest size and this one is the smallest and my favorite one to use is the small wedge brush. Now it can create different petals um, and it just takes a minute to learn how to use it and not press too hard. Then the other is the aqua brush and it comes in a package where you can buy I think small, medium, and large at Hobby Lobby and then it comes in when I buy my watercolor paint, I buy this Koi. And I'm gonna show you a pristine brand new one that hasn't actually been used yet. Um, so when you open it up, you have this really nice tray that you can mix your paints on. You can also mix it on this side. And then you have the little sponges to clean your brush off on. And this actually will come in here like this, it will have a cap. And the purpose for that is if you are out traveling and you're not close to a water source, you can put water in here and then you put your top back on and you are good to go. Then you have a water source to use for your watercolor palette. Um, I like to buy the version of this in small or extra small and this will be in the watercolor section you'll find them individually packaged uh, as well as um, the big series package which is over in the calligraphy section and that's at hobby lobby i like this but any watercolor that you have will work as you decide which brand you like the most you can test them out and see from there after you have broken yours in, it will look more like this. Now, this is a loved palette. <laughs> you can tell I've mixed colors and this is this is what it this is what it will look like. And it's okay. Don't hold it against me. Of course, you can also get watercolor pencils. I have just recently purchased these, so they are in still really good condition. Um, I don't always use watercolor pencils. Um, I prefer to have the palette right in front of me and I don't think about them, but you may enjoy using them. So if you want that, that's great. 
Now, I recommend you have a like a couple of cups of water around. If you have pretty bowls, you can. This actually has dirty water in it. It's a little ceramic cup that I got somewhere along the way and it is on my desk to be used. When you're looking at watercolor paper, you can get it anywhere. Um, I prefer Strathmore paper. I really love their paper and uh, their watercolor paper. And But also you have the option of using mixed media paper. Now this particular one is great to paint with, but it's not necessarily great to use a pointed nib on. Its fibers are a little bit harder and you might have a little bit of skipping, but a micron pen would work very well. And then uh, they have these, the premium watercolor pad that you can buy at um, Hobby Lobby and they have it in different sizes. I will buy this giant pad and then I will cut down my paper to the size that I want it to be. And then I have pieces that I can use for testing or if I want to, I can make a tag with it. So I use those extra pieces of paper for practicing. This is wonderful to letter on as well. But my ultimate favorite, and this is because I like to uh, keep a sketchbook available. And this one is a Strathmore and it's a mixed media. And I can go in here and I'm just going to go ahead and show you, uh, ideas. This is what I usually use it for. I have ideas that go in here, um, inspiration, something I'm thinking about, whether I'm doing pointed pen or a watercolor, I can just I can just play with it and I can just brainstorm on the paper. And then if I want to, I can take this paper and then I can cut it down into different sizes. So that's just a glimpse into one of my brainstorming sketchbooks, watercolor. And again, that's um, Strathmore Vision and what you can do, what and I haven't done this, is you can actually paint this, this outside cover yourself, or letter on it or whatever. I Maybe we'll do that in this course. We'll see. So these are the things that you can buy. Of course, if you already have supplies on hand, please don't feel it necessary to go out and buy any of those supplies. If you have any questions, about supplies, let me know. And thank you. Next episode, we're going to start painting. Thanks.